This video will delve into the Minnesota Timberwolves' dirty secrets they have to tell you. Back in February, when asked about how the Wolves would defend Kevin Durant in a potential playoff series, they got KD, but we got Jada McDaniels, were the exact infamous words uttered by Anthony Edwards. A question further answered when McDaniels held Durant to 6 for 15 shooting and just 18 points in Game 2. A game that included causing a beef with Devin Booker featured Chris Finch playing McDaniels a game most 41 minutes, Jaden being a game high plus 24, and scoring a game high 25 on 66.6% .6 true shooting. Jaden was asked whether or not Ant's comments gave him added pressure, to which McDaniels replied, No, not really. Ant, nobody talking about. Ant knows ball indeed, as according to Stat Mamba, Suns players are shooting under 29% from the field when being guarded by McDaniels in this series. Nas Reed beat out Malik Monk by only a few votes to win the sixth man of the year, earning the trophy with his versatile defense up front to allow lineups with either Rudy Gobert or Carl Anthony Towns, and in some cases both, to be playable. Working his way up the ladder in terms of all-time likable players in franchise history, Minnesota Mike Conley was one of four Wolves next to McDaniels, Gobert, and Alexander Walker, not including the typical one-two punch of Edwards and Towns, to score in double figures. However, the most ferocious factor about these 2024 Wolves, and what you have to stick around for, is involved in this team's dirty secrets. Just 13.8% of you watching right now are subscribed, so hit the sub box down below if you haven't already. We talked about Gobert's impact in this video from two months ago, go watch that upload after this. However, Rudy has since that upload been voted the most overrated player in the NBA by his fellow players in a poll taken by TheAthletic.com. Gobert received 13.6% of 81 votes cast built out by anonymous NBAers. The narrative surrounding Rudy has been his inability to translate his regular season defense into the playoffs given his perceived lack of lateral mobility when switched on to smaller players. While this seemed to be an issue for Gobert in previous playoff runs, it was a folding effort level when things went south for less equipped contenders Rudy was a part of, which actually led to his impact falling off. Now, on quite possibly the best team of his career, Rudy is laying everything on the line for a Chris Finch system he's bought into, and on the contrary to Casual's beliefs, is on possessions like these, where he's checking KD, resembling an elite defender in space. Here you see Gobert's switchability and foot speed when out of this Phoenix stagger, he switches onto Bradley Beal and cuts off his driving angle. He then shuts down a second Beal attack, even after falling for a pump fake, by leveraging off his lead foot and desperately lunging back to force the brick. From Beal to Booker, Devin gets it out of a Chicago action with Gobert switching, he stays solid on Booker's hezzy, and watch how Rudy's contest follows Devin's release from the bottom to the top of it. That's perfect attention to detail. So that's the first secret for casuals regarding the T-Wolves, Gobert being better than he's ever been defensively. However, obviously, Rudy still has a lot to prove. The Minnesota Timberwolves have a 2-0 series lead for the first time in franchise history and the first time in 20 years. Before getting to the next dirty secret about Minnesota that's most telling about their championship contender status, Anthony Edwards is playing high-level two-way basketball and setting the tone as this team's number one guy. With some harsh trash talk to a player he's called his GOAT in KD, consisting of a beastly 33-piece that he dropped on the Slim Reaper's head, Edwards showed NBA fans across the globe that he's not ducking any smoke. The Ant-Man shot just 3 for 12 in Game 2, but the reason you can't call it an off night is due to how Anthony locked down on defense with his overwhelming intensity that, just like his offense does, replicates the late 80s version of the great Michael Jordan. Let's get to the next dirty secret for Minnesota, which is far and away the most dangerous one for opponents of any mentioned in this video about the Timberwolves. This would be the availability of two key rotation pieces, in firstly, starter Jaden McDaniels, who many are letting slip from their short-term memory, was injured with a broken hand in the Timberwolves' 2023 first-round series L to Denver. The Wolves still were able to take a game from the eventual champs and gave them the toughest test of any team in the Mile High's all-time great title run. But it's more than worth noting that Minnesota didn't have Jaden McDaniels. Jaden's been considered one of the game's best wing defenders for the past few years. With a toughness increase, McDaniels is developing into the Scottie Pippen to Anthony Edwards' Michael Jordan. 
but in terms of why McDaniels was out last year, when speaking on his outburst consisting of punching a wall after the Wolves' final regular season game in 22-23 and being forced to sit out the first round, McDaniels knows he has something major to make up for, stating, It's embarrassing that I punched a wall. It's silly. I was down for a couple days, for sure. I was sick just watching them play. Felt it would have been different if I didn't get hurt playing. Just hurting myself. I felt selfish. I felt like I owed them one. Having made up for his foolish mistake in 2023, at least up to this point in 2024, the 28th pick out of Washington four years ago in 2020 being Jaden McDaniels, next to Canadian Nikhil Alexander-Walker, who are both pesky wing defenders, those two only associations first and second highest plus minus in the NBA playoffs so far. It's a very well-built roster here. Identically to Jaden McDaniels, Nas Reed was also out in last year's first round against Denver with an injury to his hand. Another secretly dangerous part about the Minnesota Timberwolves this year is how well the teams played despite 2024 sixth man of the year winner and definitive fan favorite Nas Reed not having found a rhythm yet. We know how lethal of a bucket getter Reed is when he's in his flow and out for the kill, but thus far, Nas is posting just 8.5 points per game on a 33-22-83 shooting split. Once he picks that up, you wonder how much more unstoppable this Wolves team gets. Given Reed's inevitably going to produce buckets and shoot the basketball night and day more efficiently, plus factoring in how Minnesota's won the first two games of this West quarterfinal by a combined 37 points in spite of Reed's struggles, this scarily displays we've likely yet to witness the best as a team from these Minnesota Miracle Men. Minnesota is in my opinion the best bet out of anyone to take down the Denver Nuggets this year. The Timberwolves split the 23-24 season series with the reigning champions, and as mentioned in this video, we're missing two prevalent forwards in Jaden McDaniels and Nas Reed. Feel free to make your case in the comments for whether or not Minnesota can compete with Denver in a seven game series. Drop an answer for a chance to get next video's commenter shout out and compete for free merch of your choosing. Today's commenter shout out goes to Boston Haltane who says, it's hard to say this Mile High City victory told us something new. We always knew that the Denver Nuggets aren't a team to back down with a sizable lead to overcome, we know that playoff Jamal Murray is a real thing. I guess this game really proved that these guys are the favorites despite how great the West is. There is no other team quite on the level of the Denver Nuggets this year. Appreciate you, Boston. Denver is the current favorite, but maybe Minnesota will have something to say about that in the coming weeks. This was your boy D-Flo. Thank you so much for liking, subscribing, commenting, and sharing as it means the world to me. And I'll see you next video.